The Lord has called us to be in the world, but not of the world. You may have heard the expression, beware of wolves in, in sheep's clothing. Well, what does that mean? It warns us that, one, things are not always what they may appear to be. And two, we need to ask ourselves, how did that wolf get the sheepskin in the first place? I'll give you a hint. A sheep was killed in order for that wolf to be able to disguise itself as a sheep. Now, in Matthew 10, verse 16, Matthew 10, verse 16, we read, Behold, I send you forth in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We could say that this means that we are to be sheep in wolves' clothing. Now, the word wise means to be thoughtful, sagacious, or discreet, and it implies a cautious character. It also denotes having practical skills or acumen and indicates intelligence or mental acquirements. The word serpent, through the idea of sharpness of vision, refers to a snake, figuratively as a type of sly, cunning, or an artful, malicious person, especially Satan. The word harmless and simple means unmixed, pure, and figuratively innocent. Snakes are cold-blooded. They cannot support themselves and need to be around another source of heat in order to maintain their own life. Wolves are pack animals. They are not independent creatures and rely on stealth and cunning to capture and kill their victims. Sheep are perceived as docile animals that can be easily manipulated and tricked, but that is not always the case. Let me share a simple story with you. You may have heard this before. A little boy was walking down a path and he came across a rattlesnake. The rattlesnake was getting old. He asked, Please, little boy, can you take me to the top of the mountain? I hope to see the sunset one last time before I die. Well, the little boy said, N No, Mr. Rattlesnake. If I pick you up, you will bite me and I will die. Well, the rattlesnake said, No, I promise. I won't bite you. Just please Take me up to the mountain. Well, the little boy thought about it and finally picked up that rattlesnake and took it close to his chest and carried it to the top of the mountain. They sat there and watched the sunset together. It was so beautiful. Then after the sunset, the rattlesnake turned to the little boy and said, can I go home now? I am tired and I am old. Well, the little boy picked up the rattlesnake and again took it to his chest and held it, held it tightly and safely. He came all the way down the mountain holding the snake carefully and took it to his home to give him some food and a place to sleep. The next day, the rattlesnake turned to the boy and asked, Please, little boy, will you take me back to my home now? It's time for me to leave this world, and I would like to be at my home now. Well, the little boy felt he had been safe all the t this time, with the and the snake had kept his word, so he would take it home as asked. He carefully picked up the snake, took it close to his chest again, and carried him back to the woods to his home to die. 
just before he laid the rattlesnake down, the snake turned and bit him in the chest. Well, the little boy cried out and threw the snake upon the ground. He said, Mr. Snake, why did you do that? Now I will surely die. The rattlesnake looked up at him and grinned. You knew what I was when you picked me up. So what's the purpose of the story? This story is a parable that has a clearer moral, like most parables, which is that you should not offer your help or aid to someone or something that you know to be dangerous. The parable is also serving as a warning to not trust the promises of a desperate man and to be wary of those who might stab you in the back. This is the kind of story that would be told and is told to children. After all, as responsible parents, it is our responsibility to teach our children carefully and to teach them well. Let's take a look at some of the facts in this story. The snake was known to be a poisonous snake by the boy. The boy was not scared by a talking snake. The snake lied and the boy believed the snake, ignoring the fact that it was a poisonous snake. The snake talked a good story and made many promises, and the boy felt good about helping the, the snake. The snake eventually returned to its basic nature and bit the boy's helping hand. The snake smiled and laughed at what it did and blamed the boy for ignoring the facts and falling for the snake's lies. So what's the point of this story? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The Lord knows that we are living among the wolves and serpents. Yet he instructs us to remain astute and alert and to not be fooled or deceived by their true nature. Yes, the Lord will protect us, but we will get bit if we pick up snakes. And we will get skinned alive if we believe anything we are told by the wolves. And if we trust in the promises of snakes and wolves instead of the promises of the Lord, we will suffer those consequences. Eve was not surprised to encounter a talking snake. Now in our times, snakes no longer speak and they do not walk upright, but they do remain true to their nature. Eve was never warned to stay away from talking snakes, but in Genesis 3, 1, we are told that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And being more subtle than any beast of the field, true to its character, the snake bit Eve. The rest, as they say, is history. Now, if wolves could speak to us today, would you really believe their assertions that they were vegan or vegetarian? And as such, as sheep, we are no longer in danger of being eaten by the wolves. Of course you wouldn't. It is important to remember that in today's world, both snakes and wolves look like us. They will say the things that we want to hear, but they will do the things that snakes and wolves always do. 
the purpose of the story of the boy in the poisonous snake has something else in mind besides the telling of a silly and rather obvious illustration. Certainly, it is, it certainly it is intended to remind us that no one but a poor, silly clown would go to take up a snake and cherish it, and that we would be very negligent and ill-advised if we did so. And even though we might feel good about helping out the snake, we should not forget that the snake is still a snake, and it will return to its true character and nature at some point in time. We should not be surprised when the snake strikes out and bites the hand that have helped it. After all, it is still a snake. And this is what snakes always do, no matter how good we have felt about helping it. This is what snakes always do. Now I want to talk to you about the upcoming elections. In our form of government, at least in theory but not always in practice, the people vote and elect their representatives to pass laws and to make decisions that they then agree to abide by and to live under. But just like the little boy who helped out the snake but in the end was bitten by the snake, we need to vote and elect persons who have a proven and demonstrable track record of following righteous principles. Snakes will always bite. Wolves will always eat meat. The Lord expects us to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves, but that does not mean that we should trust the words of snakes not to bite us or the words of wolves not to eat us. In our Western form of government, even though the majority is supposed to win, it is usually the minority that speaks out the loudest. Your vote is your voice, and usually it is the strategy of the enemy to make us feel like our voice and our vote will not matter. Yes, it is true that some political parties have rigged the elections and that some of the digital voting machines have been hacked into and the votes have been changed. And not just in countries like Venezuela or Argentina, but your voice needs to be heard. The only thing that corrupt officials and politicians fear is losing their comfortable and very well-paid jobs. They will only listen to the loudest of voices, whether those voices are righteous or corrupt. Make your voice the loudest. Your voice is represented not only in your vote, but in where you spend your money. Do not support those businesses that do not support your biblical point of view. Do not simply vote and then walk away. Your enemy and his wicked followers continue to claim that they speak for the majority of the people, but they do not. If a snake tells you that it won't bite you, it is lying to you. Snakes still bite. And if a wolf tells you that it won't eat you, it is lying to you. Wolves still eat meat. Put action behind your faith. Be the light in this present darkness. The Lord is looking at our character, not just our intentions. We are not supposed to be passive like doves, we are to be informed and actively pursuing the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we await for his return. We will not forget 
what these corrupt and godless politicians have done these past two years. We will not forget that they closed down our churches. We will not forget that they have lied to us. We will not forget, no matter what they say, that snakes bite and wolves eat meat. We will not be their victims, and we will not support their lies. We will not forget, and we will see you next time. God bless.
Get back up.